Welcome. This story is about an infamous Swedish murderer named Kjell Åke Johansson. Kjell Åke fell through the cracks of the legal system for a long time and ended up committing one of Sweden's worst known crimes to date. Kjell Åke Johansson was born in 1955 in a small town in Sweden. Kjell early on went to live with his grandparents because his parents were both abusive and they divorced when Shell was still young. The parents were alcoholics, which the grandparents were not, so he was allowed to live with them instead. But the grandfather was quite violent and would often beat and kick Shell, sometimes even beating and humiliating him in front of his school friends. Looking back at Shell's history, there's an episode when he was a teenager that stands out like an early sign of his evil mind. When Shell was 15 years old, he went alone to a local bathing area where he found two seven-year-old girls playing by themselves. He approached them and suggested that they play a board game together, but one of the girls would have to go home and get a board game from their house. One of the little girls obliged, she jumped on her bike and cycled home to pick up a game for them to play. While Shell was left alone with the other girl, he quickly threw her to the ground and got on top of her, telling her that they were going to play mommy and daddy. The girl screamed loudly and the situation was quickly stopped by some other people in the area. Shell got a stern talking to by the locals, but the incident was never reported to the police. In 1986, when Shell was 31 years old, he got a girlfriend who had two young children from an earlier relationship. Since Shell didn't work at the time, he was often at home watching the children while his partner was at work. Both of the children were subjected to severe abuse by Shell for quite a while before his partner understood what was going on. The children, who were just one and three years old at the time, were subjected to either ice cold or glowing hot showers, forced to eat black pepper, and were beaten and kicked all over their bodies. One time, Shell twisted the three-year-old's leg so hard that he broke her ankle. After this, she was forced to stand up straight on her broken foot. The partner found out about the abuse when she started seeing severe burns on her children's bodies. Shell was investigated and given four years in prison, which she served out quite quickly. After being released from prison, it wasn't long before Shell got another girlfriend who also had a young child, only 10 months old at the time. The new partner was in the dark about Shell's prior conviction and she would leave him alone with her 10 month old. Shell started giving the 10 month old beatings and scolding it in hot water. One day, the partner came home and found her baby dead. Shell was quickly found out to be the culprit. Even with his prior convictions, Shell was just given a six-year sentence for causing the death of his new partner's baby. They split up and he went into prison again for a six-year sentence. After serving the six years, now in his early 40s, Shell moved to a farm far into the woods near Aspa Lindesberg. Shortly after, he met a partner named Margareta Ern, who moved into the farm with him, and they had aspirations to start a dog kennel together. Through his interest for dogs, Shell found a new friend named Don Andersson. Him and his partner, Birgitta Lundhager, lived in the area as well. Shell would often invite Dan and Birgitta to the farm and would serve them with big amounts of alcohol which the couple were not very fond of, but Shell's dominating demeanor made them throw back a few extra shots to keep the atmosphere calm. The couple and Shell's partner knew that Shell had been to prison and served two quite long sentences, but he had lied to them about this and said that his convictions were related to stealing and a fraud case. He said that he had never been to prison for anything violent. They had nothing to worry about. One evening, while they were all quite intoxicated and playing poker in the living room, 
Shell all of a sudden got angry, snapped, and hit both Dan and Brigitta over the face. But he quickly excused himself and promised them this would never happen again. It was very unlike him, he said. Little did they know, they had just been introduced to Shell's dark side. Shell, because of his growing interest in dogs, decided to start a kennel company. Dan Anderson, his new friend, was offered a job, and him and his partner Brigitta quickly moved into Shell's farm, where the kennel was built, and they started getting some dogs in. Dan received a little bit of supplemental pay from the government for working at Shell's farm, since he was not employed anywhere else at the time. Also, his partner Brigitta quit her job and also got a small supplemental pay from the state. Whenever Dan and Brigitta's money would come into their accounts, Shell was quick to tax them for different debts that he told them that they had ran up from living at his place. Anytime they would get money, he almost emptied their accounts right away and it led to them not really having any money they could spend for themselves. Shell had also gotten his partner Margareta to quit her job so she could help him out with the kennel company. Shell had set it up so she was the owner of the company because all of her names were used for the paperwork, even though it was him who would be in full control of the company in practice. About a year later, the company was investigated and shut down because of fraudulent paperwork and tax fraud charges. Since Margareta's name was used for all the paperwork, she got most of the trouble and Shell got away fairly easy even though he was the one who had committed the actual crimes. Shell used this opportunity to tell his partner Margareta that since she was in such big debts now because of the fraud case, he would have to take full control of her bank accounts as well, which she obliged to. Since all four of them just worked at the farm now, they would spend a lot of time together. They often played poker and drank, even though Dan and Brigitta were not big drinkers, they often went along with Shell's wishes. One night, while they were all highly intoxicated, Shell started brutally beating on Brigitta. Both Dan and Margareta were threatened that they had to join in or else they would get the same treatment. When Shell was later asked why Birgitta got such a severe beating that evening, Shell said that Birgitta had placed a very high bet on the poker table which he could not call and it made him furious. After this episode, Shell started isolating all the three others more and more. He took all of their cell phones away and told them they are only allowed to contact friends and family after getting a clear from him first. He also told them they should not try and sneak up at night to find their phones because he has a very acute hearing and he would come quickly to beat them. Margareta, Dan and Birgitta, now effectively prisoners, started getting very frightened and tried to figure out ways that they could escape from the farm. Late one evening, Margareta, Dan, and Birgitta all jumped into one of the cars and started driving down a long forest road to reach the main road and get help. Just as they started driving down the pebbled road, Shell noticed them and jumped into a car himself. On the dark and narrow roads through the woods, he quickly came up behind them and crashed his car right into the back of theirs, making them both slide off the road. He got them all out and forced them to walk back to the farm. He reprimanded them and told them he had just bought a gun which he would use the next time if any of them should try to escape again. After this episode, in early 2002, a more systematic abuse of Brigitte started. Shell had gotten the idea that he was going to make Birgitta confess to having abused her own children, which she hadn't. She would try to answer him the ways that he wanted, but he never seemed to get the full confession the way that he wanted it. These are some things that he did to her while trying to gain a confession from her, and in the process starting his own little Spanish Inquisition. 
Birgitta would be regularly beaten and kicked. At night, she would be tied to her bed, and her door was tied to a grand piano on the opposite side, making her room inescapable. Her partner, Dan, would also sleep in the same room, unrestrained, but he dared not untie her in fear of shell. Birgitta would be forced to run around naked outside in a circle over pebbled sharp rocks in the driveway. Shell would stand on one corner and whip her with a stick every time she passed like a depraved circus act. It was winter in Sweden at the time and it was very cold outside. Shell would bring Birgitta to a lake behind their house and he would use rope to sink her into the ice-cold water on several occasions. Shell also started taking photographs of the abuse, which was later used as some of the biggest evidence against him in court. One disturbing photograph found in the investigation showed Birgitta having been completely covered with a wound plaster spray made for dogs, which had a metallic color to it. Neither Dan nor Margareta dared to try to save Birgitta in fear of what would happen to them. They were also beaten and kicked if they tried protesting in any way. One evening at the farm, when Shell was actually sober, he had decided he wanted another confession from Birgitta. He went and grabbed her from her room and twisted her arm so hard that it broke and became limp. Shell then tied Birgitta to a chair in the living room and placed on each of her arms a bite sleeve. A bite sleeve is a piece of reinforced fabric that is used for training police dogs to catch criminals. He then proceeded into the kennel outside and came back into the living room with an adult Rottweiler and a big German Shepherd. He then sicked both the dogs on Birgitta who sat tied up in the chair the dogs were familiar with the bite sleeves and went into a ferocious attack on Birgitta's arms. Dan, who had witnessed this episode, later said that Birgitta had not made a single noise during the attack, but he could tell in her eyes that she was scared to death. Other times, Birgitta would be tied to a chair in the living room, where Shell would pour lighter fluid on her and light it. He would also use her as target practice for knife throwing while she was tied up to the chair. Since Shell was usually quite drunk when he was doing this, the knives usually never cut her, but once he did land one that stood right into her upper shoulder area. Dan, who was after all Birgitta's partner, started protesting more against the abuse, and Shell felt that he needed to be taught a lesson. He took Dan into the garage where he had balanced a wooden pallet on the ground. Dan was then forced to stand on top of the wooden pallet and Shell put a noose around his neck that was tied to one of the roof beams. Shell then brought out a blowtorch and started burning the pallet and Dan's feet, making it so that he would have to balance on top of the burning pallet or else risk falling off and hanging himself from the noose. Birgitta was also burned several times with the blowtorch. Now into the spring months, Birgitta's health started to become very bad, but the abuse did not stop. Shell started pouring salt and pepper into Birgitta's wounds, sometimes forcing her mouth open with a tool so he could pour salt and pepper directly into her mouth. One day, around May 2002, miraculously, Birgitta managed to get to her cell phone and she sent a cryptic message to the local welfare center. She wrote, It's not Dan. Dan is innocent. There is an armed person here. The welfare center called her back to check up on her, but when they did, they were met on the line by Birgitta, who quickly told them that she had never written such a message, and she quickly hung up. The welfare center assumed that it was some kind of mistake and they didn't follow it up. That evening, Shell shaved Birgitta's head completely bare. 
May 27, 2002. In the morning, Margareta was trying to help Brigida to take a wash in the shower. She would often wake up soaked in her own urine since she was tied to the bed. Margareta could tell that Brigida was barely alive and she asked Shell if she could take her to a doctor, which he refused. After the shower, while helping Brigida into her bed, she fell over on the floor and died right there on the bedroom floor. Dan and Margareta tried CPR, but to no avail. Dan told Shell that they would have to call an ambulance, but Shell just replied, calling an ambulance now, that would be like giving myself up. We're definitely not doing that. Shell had completely other thoughts on his mind, like how to hide a body. Shell sat Dan and Margareta down on the kitchen table and started reading them some pages from the Swedish penal code. He explained to them that they too would spend the rest of their lives in prison if they were caught for this and they would help, have to help them hide the body. They drove around the area and tried to dig some holes but the ground was very tough and they had to ditch the burial plan. May 30th, three days after the murder, and Shell had gotten a plan. He told the two others that Dan would take the blame for the murder, Shell would help him write a suicide note where Dan would take the blame, Dan would then later go to commit suicide next to Birgitta's body, leaving Shell and Margareta completely out of the picture. Threatened with torture, and having witnessed what Shell was capable of, Dan obliged to the plan. Shell dictated a suicide note to him, which Dan wrote on a piece of paper in his own handwriting. They loaded Birgitta's body into the trunk of a car, Dan took the suicide note with him and drove for about 7 European miles, that's 40 US miles, to a secluded area. He then poured a flammable liquid in the car and lit it on fire. Witnessing right in front of him how far things had actually gotten, Dan managed to throw the rest of Shell's insane plan out of the window and instead went to get help. He initially told the police that he had killed his partner Birgitta and where they could find the burned out car. During the investigation, both Shell and Margareta also quickly became suspects since they all lived together. At first, both Dan and Margareta were too scared to say anything about Shell, but after a few days in custody, realizing they were now safe, Margareta started telling them about the abuse. Shell Åke Johansson was found to be the boss of the whole operation and he was later sentenced to life in prison where he still is now. This case became infamous in Sweden not only because of the extent of the abuse and torture, but also the fact that Shell had seemingly fell through the cracks of the legal system. The defendant standing in front of them, accused of this horrific torture killing, was already convicted of torturing children and had even killed a 10-month-old. It's safe to say that Shell Åke will never see the light of day outside prison ever again.